Hello and welcome to Illustrate to Educate. You've come to the right place for simple and objective videos on topics that matter. Have you ever wondered how the stock market works? In this video I'll make it super easy for you to understand how it works with some simple examples and explanations. What is stock? A share of stock is literally a share in an ownership of a company. When you buy a share of stock, you're entitled to two small fractional parts of the company. The assets which include everything the company owns like buildings, equipment, and trademarks, and their earnings which is all the money the company brings in from selling its products and services. Why do companies want to share their assets and earnings? Because they need money to grow or expand their business. Companies only have two ways to raise money. A bank can lend the money to the company which would include paying back the loan with interest or the company can sell stock known as equity financing. The advantage of equity financing is that it distributes the risk of doing business among a large pool of investors. Let's take this flower shop for example. The shop would be funded by investors and the founder doesn't have to risk his own money. If the company closes down, the founder doesn't lose all of his money, instead the investor's money would be lost. Next, let's talk about selling shares. For simplicity, let's use a hypothetical example to explain the basic principles behind issuing and buying stock. Let's say you've always dreamed of opening a donut shop. You love donuts, and you've done your homework to figure out how much it would cost to launch a new donut business. $500,000 for billing and equipment, and $250,000 for annual expenses like ingredients, employee salaries, and utilities. Let's say you generate $325,000 in donut sales and make $75,000 profit. Not bad. The only problem is, you don't have $750,000 for startup costs. You could take out a loan, but that accrues interest. What about finding investors who would give you money in exchange for a share of ownership of the donut shop? This is the logic that companies use when they make decisions to issue stock to private or public investors. They believe that the company will be profitable enough that investors will see a good return. In this case, if investors paid a total of $750,000 for shares in the donut shop, they could expect to earn $75,000 annually. That's a solid 10% return. As the owner of the donut shop, you can set the initial price of the company as well as the total number of shares of stock you want to sell. Let's say you set the price at its actual value of $750,000 and sell 100 shares at $7,500 per share. Investors could expect a 10% return. But what if you decide to sell stocks at a future potential value of the company, say $1.5 million? Investors could still expect a decent 5% return. How does a company decide how many shares to sell? That's a great question. If you issue a lot of shares, that would lower the price of each individual share, perhaps making the stock more attractive to loan investors. For example, if we sold 100,000 shares of our donut shop, they would only cost $7.50 per share. Another consideration is ownership. Each person who buys a share of stock essentially owns a piece of the company and has a say in how the company is run. We'll talk more about shareholders in a minute, but for now it's important to understand that as owner, you may wish to buy a majority of the available shares yourself so that you remain in majority control of the company. Let's talk about a stock exchange by going back to our donut shop example. If you were interested in recruiting a pool of investors, where would you find these people? You could place an ad in the paper, or you could contact friends and family, but this wouldn't work very well. A stock market solves this problem. Stocks in publicly traded companies are bought and sold at a stock market or stock exchange like the New York Stock Exchange. Think about why going to the supermarket is so convenient. Because you can buy everything you need in one stop. The New York Stock Exchange is like a supermarket for stocks. Think of it as a big room where everyone who wants to buy and sell shares of stock can go and do exactly that. Modern stock exchanges make buying and selling easy. You don't have to actually travel to New York to visit the New York Stock Exchange. You can call a stockbroker who does business with the New York Stock Exchange, or you can buy and sell stocks online for a small fee. By using a stock exchange, you can buy and sell shares instantly. Stock exchanges have an interesting side effect. Because all the buying and selling is done electronically, we can track the constantly fluctuating price of stock in real time. Investors can watch, for example, how a stock's price reacts to national economic news, news from the company, media reports, and lots of other factors. All publicly traded companies need to issue quarterly earning reports through the Securities and Exchange Commission. If those earnings are uninspiring, shareholders might decide to sell some of their stock, which would lower the stock price. But if the newspaper reports an overall increase in popularity, 
more people might buy shares and the price would go back up. In a minute, we'll talk more about this. What is a shareholder? Shareholders are people who own shares of stock in a company, which entitles them to a say in how the company is run. Shareholders elect a board of directors to make the company's major decisions, such as the number of shares to be issued to the public. Interestingly, not all companies decide to have public shareholders. Companies can choose to be privately or publicly held. In a privately held company, the shares of stock are all owned by a small group of people who buy and sell their shares amongst themselves. A publicly held company is owned by thousands and is traded on a stock exchange. Why do companies issue stock to the public? They need to raise a large quantity of money quickly through an initial public offering. The corporation might sell 1 million shares of stock at $10 a share to raise $10 million in a short amount of time. The company then invests that money in equipment and employees. Some companies will pay an annual dividend to the shareholders from the profits. Young companies, however, are more likely to issue growth stocks in which the profits are reinvested and shareholders hope for a big payout down the road. Now we can dive more into why stock prices go up and down. It has a lot to do with free market forces. From the moment a stock is sold to the public, its price will rise and fall. It can make the stock market difficult to predict and is precisely the reason why short-term stock market investing is so risky. Market forces aren't a total mystery though. We know for example that prices rise and fall primarily because of the changes in supply and demand. If there are a fixed number of shares in circulation, then the price of stock will rise as more people want to buy it and fall as more people want to sell it. The tricky part is to figure out what influences demand. Why do people want to buy or sell a certain stock? Earnings and profits certainly play a large role. If your donut shop posts record sales in the most recent quarter, then it will probably attract more investors, pushing up the stock price. But earnings only tell half the story. What if the world runs out of flour or a health trend takes flight that discourages tasty donuts? This would push stock prices down. Remember, buy low, sell high like you can see in this example. The safest investments are slow growth stocks like Coca-Cola or IBM and riskier to go for the next big thing and cash out quickly after the stock price skyrockets. The inherent risk of the stock market is that any number of forces, logical or otherwise, can push prices up or down. In recent years, we've witnessed the boom and consequent bust of two large stock market bubbles that formed around the internet sector in the early 2000s and the housing market six years later, or the coronavirus pandemic in 2020. In all cases, commodities became overvalued and the investors poured money into unprofitable or unsustainable markets. When the truth or fear came out, investors rushed to sell, sending stock prices through the floor. Lastly, let's talk about market averages. Have you heard of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P 500, or the NASDAQ Composite? These are averages that give you a general idea of how the stock market is doing. The Dow Jones is the sum of the value of the 30 largest companies in America. Think GM, Goodyear, and ExxonMobil. S&P 500 is a value of the 500 largest companies and the NASDAQ composite is an average of all stocks listed on the NASDAQ exchange. Beyond seeing the general health of the stock market, if these averages rise together we call it a bull market and a bear market if the Dow Jones declines more than 20%. Hopefully this video helped you understand a bit about how the stock market works. We covered a lot of information about what stocks are and why companies use them. We talked about shareholders and stock exchanges. We discussed why stock prices fluctuate. And lastly, we talked about market averages. I hope that this helped you understand more about buying, selling, and owning stock. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Illustrate to Educate by clicking on the button below, ring the bell to get notifications, and be sure to check out my other simple and objective videos on topics that matter.